What's good, everybody? This is your boy Jay Shire from the Behind the Bench. Um, I'm about to give y'all my top five teams of the Western Conference. And so this is going to be a real quick video. I'm going to have a couple um, takes on a couple teams. And then, like I said, it's going to be a quick video. Um, my number one team in the Western Conference to start the season is the Denver Nuggets. Um, defending champs. Jamal Murray, Jokic, he's the best player in the league. So you know he's the best player in the Western Conference. You got Aaron Gordon. They got they done picked up some key draft picks. I expect this team to carry the best record going into the halfway point by All-Star. My number two team, this team is the New Orleans Pelicans. They held the number one spot for weeks. And then look then, you know, Zion did his knuckle. He was he was too he you know he wanted to eat the booty. So his focus got off from playing basketball and then he got injured and everything else. So as long as Zion can stay on the court, he's a mismatch problem for a lot of teams where a lot of teams don't have true bigs power forwards and centers, and Zion gets most of his points in the paint, so he's going to be going to the line. Um, he needs to improve on his free throws, and hopefully he could add something by the all-star break in his game, at least a 10-foot jump shot, you know, just to keep people honest. Um, not sure if he worked on that in the offseason, but we shall see. You know, and I expect big things for B.I. C.J. McCullough is going to be C.J. McCullough, real solid. But that's my number two team. My number three team is the Los Angeles Clippers. The reason why I got the Los Angeles Clippers, because with the new league rules of how they got to stay in games and and play to make all – first team offense and defense and stuff like that. This is how they get paid by making these all NBA team. And now it's just the five best players. It ain't really, you know, by position. So I expect Kawhi Leonard and Paul George to have some bounce back seasons, but the key to the Clippers really taking it to another level and if I was running the Clippers, Paul George would be my main scorer. I would have him, hey, I need you to average 28 points a game, which he's capable of doing. My number two scorer, it would not be Kawhi Leonard. It will be Zubak. You give Zubak about 14 touches, 12, shot attempts, 14, 12 to 14 shot attempts a night, he's capable of averaging 22 to 24 points a game. He's that type of player. He's just being used wrong because, you know, um, they like to do that analytic stuff over there in L.A., but if they run the inside out and let Zubak be the number two scorer, it makes nights and it takes a lot of stress off of Kawhi Leonard, which he don't have to score 22 points or 25 points. He could score. He could be a consistent 18 to 20 point game score focus on defense put most of his energy towards defense which will make the clippers a better team and if they if they do the zubak way i might put them up there as the number one team just because they got veterans on that team and everybody will know they roll but the clippers is going to be who the clippers is they're going to play stupid shoot a lot of threes, but I still got them number third in, in, the, in the Western Conference. Number four, I got the Phoenix Suns. I don't know how this Bradley Beal, um, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant going to work. Kevin Durant, he's, he's not that dude. And a lot of people think he's one of the greatest scorers ever. Well, if you're one of the greatest scorers, why you ain't scoring when, when the team needs you to score? It's a difference when Kevin Durant is a great shot maker, 
right? But he don't have that dog in him. He don't have that killer in he don't have that killer instinct to take over a game and be like, you know what, y'all sit back. I'm about to score 14, 16 points in this fourth quarter because I'm the best player in the game. I'm the well, I ain't gonna say the game. I'm the best player on the team. I'm the best player in this particular game, whoever they're playing against. And my shot can't be bothered. He don't have that in him. Devin Booker don't got that in him either. They want to, they think they're, they're, they're them. They think that they are that dude, but they really are not that dude. They don't have the, they don't have that dog in them to embarrass whoever's guarding them. They could get buckets, but they ain't going to try to embarrass you. They're not going to pull, you know, a, a Michael Jordan, a Larry Bird, a Kobe Bryant. They're not trying to embarrass you. They're too good. They're too nice of, you know, we just want to play basketball. That's all. Nah, when I came up, I'm trying to embarrass whoever's guarding me. I'm going to talk my stuff, and I'm trying to embarrass you. So when we play again, you don't even want to guard me. That's the type of dog I was. I'm not saying I was the best best on the court, but whoever I, whoever was guarding me, I'm going to make you, you're going you gonna, to, Hey, you gonna have a long night. You gonna have a long game. And if I was guarding you, yeah, you gonna have to work for those points. That's just who I was. But let me go ahead and continue on with this countdown. The number fifth team I have is Memphis. I think they will straddle between the fifth and the sixth, but I think they will end up falling by the being a fifth seed by the time John Morant come back. Um. Adding Marcus Smart, he could probably say things to John Morant that a lot of other people in that locker room, when they had Dylan Brooks, could not say to John Morant. See, John Morant walked around that locker room like I'm that I'm the best player on the team, and can nobody on this team say nothing to me? Nobody. But Marcus Smart built a little bit different. He's not gonna back down. He know he ain't the best player on the team, but you ain't going to punk him. You ain't going to talk crazy to him. And he's going to get in your face. That's who Marcus Smart is. He's not, he don't have no B up in him. You, you see what I'm saying? So that's what's going to help the Memphis Grizzlies. Even though they lost Steven Adams for the whole season. In their backup center, he's he's still recovering from his injury. I believe they still will have – they'll make a move. They'll make a move by trade deadline to get a big or they'll get somebody off of waivers or, or something, you know. Um, I would like for them to go after Thomas Bryant that's in Denver. But I don't know if Denver would make that trade. But if they was able to get Thomas Bryant to play on that team – Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll do some things. But I still got Memphis as a fifth seed. Not sure how they'll look after the All-Star break. But, you know, that's my Western Conference top five. Until then, I'm your boy, Jay Shy. This is the Behind the Bench Network. Like, subscribe, share, follow, all that social media stuff, man. Listen to our past content. Of us talking basketball from Jermaine, JB, and Kelvin. Until then, I'm out.